Example one of things that really piss me off. This is a router bit that I got today from uh, Screwfix. And it's taken me about 10 minutes to get in the outer packaging using scissors. And now this refuses to come out of the plastic base. Normally I'd just grab hold of it and give it a yank, but no grip, no finger grip. So it's going to have to be something like get a pair of pliers down here if I can get them in, wench that in a vice. So what would normally be, you know, two minute job is now going to be a 20 minute job. It's just one of those subconscious adjustments that I know I need to make with arthritis. Here's another one. I make no apologies for the state of the kitchen because I'm a lazy bastard. So this is a little 20 mil um, frying pan. Wasn't very expensive. I think it was about 13, 14 quid from Amazon. But look at the handle. The handle, big, chunky. It's got a big indent here where I can place my thumb. And it balances really well. I didn't want anything bigger than a 15 mil, uh, 20 mil. Is this 20? Yeah, it's 20 mil. Because we're about to lift it. <laughs> but this, absolutely perfect. And also, it doesn't take a huge amount of cleaning, and you don't need to use a huge amount of oil. So I'm doing my body good as well, um, and saving water and things, because I should just wipe it out after using it, and then heat it up. But the handle, the ergonomically designed handle, it's non-slippy, so it's good grippy. But if I just show you the actual profile of the handle, so I can curl my fingers, I can rest on here, and then instead of having to bend to hang on to it, I can just balance it on this part of my hand here. So that, that again, is an unconscious, well, it was a sort of planned but unconscious adaptation and dead easy to do. And it's a lot of those little easy um, unconscious adaptations that can make life with restricted joint movement a lot easier. Anyone living within a 10 mile radius of Sheffield, I feel I ought to offer my, offer my apology for the, uh, I think that's probably to store it in, is it? Good. My apology for the, uh, the foul language whilst attempting to remove this little thing from its packaging. Um, that didn't go particularly well by anyone's stretch of the imagination. But it is done. So, apart from the subconscious adaptations to the way I can, or the way I deal with limited dexterity and strength as well, I'd never be able to go climbing again. Um, there's the additional planning for doing those little extra tasks that shouldn't necessarily be an issue but ah so there we have it anyway i've got the, got the little fucker out i might use it later other adaptations when i was doing the coin rings i very often find myself using these two very small little vice is the plural of vice vices along with the big one there and the even bigger one over there these were the ones that I'd find myself using more commonly. Now I've got a pair of little springy things called handy tongs or handy whatever, which are good for holding electric components if you're trying to solder them, but absolutely useless for holding anything that needs holding. So this, I could put a G-clamp on the edge of the bench and hold this, and then this would be like my grippy that I would use instead of grippy. Now again, it's unconscious. It was something that I did without thinking that I need to do something. So I realized I couldn't grip with my fingers, had these handy, so just use those. So it's a natural, logical progression. By the way, these will be going on eBay soon as unfinished coin rings, as will all of the uh, 
coin ring making equipment unless I decide to keep it and run coin ring workshops but it'll be me telling people how to do it rather than showing people how to do it so I don't know it's a tricky one because it does involve annealing with um, with a blowtorch and I'm not sure how uh, how the insurance is going to cope with that um, teaching people who've never made a coin ring to then hold it in front of a blowtorch until it's red hot come back to that think about that later so these are some of the physical adaptations that I've found myself using generally not planned they're reactive rather than proactive these were proactive what well, I decided I wasn't I always used to strip cables and wires just by running a blade around and then pulling this is mainly for twin and earth 2.5 twin and earth and it grabs it grabs the cable and then strips the outer sheaf off so that's quite a good little good little toy this is the nipex and um it does pretty much the same but for round cable so that will grab the round cable there those jaws there will then pull the insulation sheaving off it then opens and just drops I've also started to use rather than well I've used two lots rather than using that old twisty method because twisting cabling is a pain in the ass at the best of times so I've tried doing it with my fingers these are crimp furrows and this is for two wires together so you can put two two and a half uh, square um, uh, cabling flex in there crimp it up and uh, and then that pops straight into the um, into the socket that you're going to screw it into so using little little adaptive technology such as this for stripping down you know round um, flex normal flex this is a little tool that you just put on there spin it around a few times there you go you see my dexterity isn't that good and then pull it off and it it cuts around the flex and then puts a, a slit down and you can just pull the outer sheathing off so again before i would have done it just with a knife yeah i still carry a little pen pen knife for, for doing things like opening boxes and odd other little stuff but it's no longer something that i would use for stripping cables next constant bane of my life scissors good pair of scissors but can't get me thumb through there i can push it through but then it's a pain getting it out and then it's impossible to use so found these look at this I think they're OXO, something like that. I think it said OXO on there. They probably need a wash. But the beauty of these is chuck them in a dishwasher. Again, small adaptations just to daily life. My, um, my pen which obviously I can't find now. Pause. It's not my main pen, but it's one of these. I don't know what you call them. It's posh anyway. And it's got the texture here. It's other pen's um, it's a stainless steel barrel. And again, it's got ribs. It's ribbed for pleasure. But it just means I can hold it without too many issues and again for me writing with a pen is essential because that's how I make my notes and depending on how bad the joints are at any particular time my notes are either legible or worse than illegible you need to take them to a chemist and have them made into something nice so again it's all of those flowing through uh, a process of just making small but significant changes. Now that's the physical side. Next is, and because physical 
illnesses, physical changes to our body, whether you break a leg or whether you have deteriorating arthritis or whatever it is, I think are much more tangible, much more, we, we can focus on those. But it's the mental side of our health, which I always find the difficult thing, especially for me to talk about. And people who know me and people who watch these videos will know that I'm usually pretty open and honest about it. Um, because that's a coping strategy that I've learned. So things like if I don't feel good in a certain environment, I will leave that environment. If it's not a group of people that I'm overly confident talking to about my own mental health condition, I'll just say, oh, I had a really bad curry last night. I've got the shit, so I'm going to have to go. And, sorry, you know, bye. Uh, and then leave. Or if I'm, um, uh, you know, in somewhere I know, I'll just make an excuse to go sit in the toilet for 20 minutes and, and calm down a little bit. Now, those, those are coping strategies. There are lots of little coping strategies that collectively can make a big difference. In the world of mental health, we will use, I say we, I'm not a part of it anymore, we will use um, things like cognitive behavioural therapy. Now that's that's a very, I mean, it's, it's a bit like a curate's egg really. Um, it can work for a lot of people, but it doesn't work for other people. But again, it's one of those tools in the toolbox. The problem that we're getting at the moment and this is mainly because of COVID. I'm not going to stare at these scissors all the time. I'm just going to stare at something nicer outside. There. Isn't that better? More relaxing already. Now, the problem that we've had with COVID is it has... Um, it has left a wasteland of people with quite severe mental health problems. Before COVID was bad enough, we were seeing increasing mental health problems amongst young people. Uh, but now, right away across the full spectrum, full age spectrum, we're, we're seeing some very, very severe mental health problems. I've kind of got the edge a little bit because I, I've, I've known about mine for, for a number of years, for you know, a good number of years. So even then, you know, there are times when I just isolate myself from everything and everyone, sometimes for a number of days. The two common um, presentations for me are shut down or meltdown shut down stay in bed stay there don't do anything just stay in bed meltdown is smash something up horrible to see horrible for me to feel afterwards and also you know the effect it has on, on sort of like family and friends so covid has given us the situation now where we have another pandemic and it is in a sense just as bad as covid and has led to a number of deaths. And that, that, that new pandemic is a mental health pandemic. It's generally depression, clinical depression, anxiety. And anxiety and depression very often go hand in hand, but I like to treat them as separate presenting conditions. So what do we do about that? Um, now, the NHS would like, I'm hoping that this little breeze isn't ruining the sound too much. Um, the NHS has, a, understandably, through years of underfunding, been overwhelmed by this, completely overwhelmed by this, don't know what to do. So we're rolling out, or they're rolling out. Um, we're rolling out. I'm still going to say that because there's so many years working with the NHS. We're, so we're rolling out strategies which are, are very much kind of blanket strategies i'm going to face the other way because i don't like the idea of taking photos of of people um without necessarily their knowledge obviously unless they're pretty girls so i look down towards bernard road bridge now when the only tool that you've got is a hammer every problem looks like a nail so uh, mental health services are really struggling and they will feed people into CBT whether or not it's going to work. So it's making the patient fit whatever available uh, therapies we have. It's not necessarily about tailoring therapies to the patient, which is what I always used to do working in the uh, drug and alcohol field. And a part of the consequence of that is that you know, we're, we're, we're putting a sticky plaster on, on the wrong arm, if you like. And um, 
my my view on that is quite clear is that it's not the fault of the NHS um, mental health services have always been uh, the second class services I'm going to turn around again so I don't end up filming people sorry about this there we are isn't that nicer we'll look at the rail bridge instead we'll zoom out a little bit I might have given someone seasick then sorry about that so I think what we need to do is, is alongside that, we need to look at self-help, informal group help. As a part of what I, I wanted when I set the, the boathouse up. In fact, it's written into our, it's written into our articles of uh, association as a non-profit. So it's about informal group support. I've got a couple of pages, I'll put links to them underneath from Made by Martin, which where I try to explain anxiety and depression. I also try to explain cancer a bit more as well, because I think they're, they're, they're both kind of like areas we don't generally have a great deal of knowledge and understanding about in general life. But the real thing, I think, for me, that I'd like to... Um, here comes a train, look at that. There's a train on the track, yeah. All right, it's a bus with wheels on a track. Um, is that with mental health, we can ad adopt the same kind of coping strategies that we do with physical health. So, you know, get a pair of scissors that work, um, better for you. Um, learn to plan uh, a little bit more time to do things. And, you know, on a, on a normal basis, I think that is again a subconscious um, coping strategy and it's one of those there's people over there let's turn around again oh there's people coming down here as well let's try not to film no we won't film them even though it's pretty cool won't film them um, so it's those subconscious coping strategies I think we need to work on and it's okay you know it's okay to say I feel like shit I don't want to do that. It's okay to say no. I'm having a real fucked up time at the moment. So I don't need your shit on top of my shit. It's okay to say that. And if your friends, colleagues, etc. are unable to understand and respond positively to that, fuck them. Seriously. If your friends can't understand when you need space, when you need support, when you need to be alone, when you don't need to be alone, when you need someone to just kind of like be there and not talk. If you haven't got those sort of friends, or if you've got the sort of friends who say, I'll oh, pull yourself together, be right, fuck them right off now, because they're not your friends. Or if you don't want to fuck them off right now, tell them, go Google mental health. If you don't understand, fuck off. It's all right to do that. And um, at one of my regular reviews for my mental health a few weeks ago, um, the, um, the assessor, <laughs> the clinical psychologist, who's only, you know, only a couple of pages behind what I used to write, it's all right. One of the things she said, or one of the observations she made was, do you know what, it's actually quite good and therapeutic to swear I said, oh, really? I might, I might give that a try. She said, yeah, we've, we watch your videos. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking busted. But so don't, you know, don't, don't give yourself a hard time for being human. The thing with depression and, and anxiety, but especially depression, is because it's not seen, I sometimes don't blame people for not recognising it's there. It's not really their fault. If you fell down a flight of stairs and broke your leg, people see you've got a huge plaster cast. Saying to someone with, with a depressive episode or saying to someone with a mental health problem, I'll pull yourself together, it'll be right. It's like expecting someone with a plaster cast on their leg to run for a bus. It's not gonna, it's not gonna happen. And again, you know, a, a depressive episode, an acutely depressive episode, sometimes what you're looking at there is, um, is the damage, the initial damage. So let's equate that with falling down the stairs and breaking your leg. But then after you've had the pot taken off your leg, the plaster cast taken off your leg, 
that leg's weak still and you need physiotherapy to rebuild the strength rebuild the dexterity and it's exactly the same with an acute mental health episode you will find that the damage is done and 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 there is a physical side to that as well there is a physical side to a mental health episode that can make you feel like you've you've done 10 rounds with mike tyson who apparently is a boxer and it takes healing even even just the the, the the psychological trauma can take a great deal of healing over a long period of time and it's not always going to be easy same as recovering from a, a a broken leg there are times when you'll feel like you've regained all of your strength and then there'll be other times and you'll feel oof you know can't really walk on this right now and that's all normal that's all perfectly normal completely normal and what I like to say to people is is we give ourselves a hard time because we can because we're always told and and this is this is for men and women young people and old people but we're always kind of like told oh pull yourself together we're always told you know oh you know it's just you're just feeling a bit down and we feel like we failed them we we feel like they're expecting us to be like them but you know what they're probably no different they just don't have the coping strategies so this video is mainly about those learned informal strategies that we don't realize sorry there's amazon yeah i think that's two videos in a row that have been interrupted by an amazon driver which is good but it also helps prove that point sometimes i go very much into recluse mode so amazon has been a lifeline for me so yeah this video and, and one of the things that i do consciously and subconsciously is I'll, I'll get something off amazon that i could get from around the corner but it means i don't have to go out i don't have to expose myself to the real world probably not the best terminology to use <laughs> but you know what i mean and so this is this is about those little subconscious and little informal changes that we can make and i'll do another video um because I, I yeah i know i've promised quite a lot that I'll be doing this video um, for a few months now uh, and I'll be doing another video about how we can reasonably um, access help whether that what for whatever that is a lot of people would say I don't like contacting my GP because I know I won't get an appointment and I don't want to waste their time and whatever well that's bollocks for a start and the same goes with mental health you can help for uh, you can ask for help or uh, or help for ask either of those either of those will probably work um so the next video i'll do pro probably in a couple of weeks time um when i've recovered from making this one the next video will be about accessing uh help structures and i thoroughly intend the boathouse to be one of those informal help structures um with the relaxation suite, the snoozlum that we're going to build, and also um, just generally make this a safe space inside the gates for everybody. And I think that's what we've managed to do over the years, informally, when we've just had parties and gatherings and whatever here. We have made this a, a safe, welcoming, accessible space. I'll put the links to the stuff that I wrote about cancer and the stuff that I wrote about anxiety and depression underneath or you can just go visit madebymartin.co.uk and find it all on there okay for now i hope some people will have found this of interest i know it's different from my normal stuff of making things and brewing things and whatever uh, but I, it's something that i know i promised that i'd i'd make months ago and so i've actually got around today i've got a circular to it i've got around to it and uh and this is it if you like this sort of rubbish please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you click the thumbs up it gives me a great big warm electronic hug thanks for watching whatever you're doing do it safely and take care of yourself and those around you cheers